Assalamu alaikum. This is a presentation for medical students by Dr. Mumtaz Ahmad Umar and today's topic is Aerotitis Media or Autotic Barotrauma. Definition It is a non separative condition resulting from failure of the eustachian tube to maintain the middle ear pressure at ambient atmospheric pressure level. As the depth increases during diving, the pressure it raises. One atmospheric pressure increases for every 10 meters depth. However, pressure decreases with increase in altitude. So what is the mechanics of the barrel trauma? The medial end of the eustachian tube, it is slit-like and it is collapsed normally in close proximity to the lymphoid tissue. This is the Ostman pad of fat. Uh, and these are the two muscles which act on the eustachian tube. This is the cartilaginous portion of the eustachian tube and the two muscles acting on it are the tensor veli palatini muscle and the levator pala veli palatini muscles. So this tube which remains closed normally, it opens up on swallowing equalizing the pressure. At high altitude, middle ear pressure is higher then the environmental pressure as I already mentioned with raise in the uh, altitude the pressure atmospheric pressure it lowers down so at high altitude middle ear pressure it is higher than the environmental pressure therefore the air from the middle ear escapes passively along the eustachian tube to in the into the nasopharynx to equalize the pressures Whereas during descent, the environmental pressure is higher than the middle ear pressure. Therefore, we need to aerate the middle ear actively by performing the Valsalva maneuver or other methods like chewing or uh, inflating the mouth, uh, inflating the mouth with closed nose and try to swallow, which is a Toynes B procedure. If the tube it does not open and the pressure gradient it increases beyond 90 mm of mercury, the tube will be locked. Similarly, during sleep, uh, during deep sea diving and hyperbaric chamber, the same mechanism can happen. So what is the mechanism of barotrauma? As eustachian tube maintains the pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane, so for equal pressure on both sides of the tympanic membrane, the gas must move freely between the nasopharynx and the middle ear. However, when an upper respiratory tract infection or allergy or any other mechanism which interferes with the eustachian tube functioning during changes in the environmental pressure, the pressure in the middle ear either falls below the ambient pressure causing the retraction of the tympanic membrane or rises above it causing bulging. With the negative middle ear pressure, a transudate of fluid is formed in the middle ear. As the pressure difference it increases, there will be ECMO, there may develop lead to ecchymosis and subepithelial hematoma in the mucous membrane of the middle ear and the tympanic membrane. However, a very large pressure difference may lead to bleeding in the middle, middle ear called hemotympanum or it may lead to rupture of the eardrum or there will be development of perilymph fistula through the oval or round window. So what are the causes? The problem often occurs with altitude change, more common with descent rather than ascent. So the usual cause is rapid descent during air flight, underwater diving, diving in the mountains or compression in the pressure chamber. Swelling in the throat can also cause it. Then insufficient equilibration of the middle ear. External ear barotrauma may occur on ascent if high pressure air is trapped in the external artery canal either by tight fitting diving equipment or ear wax so symptoms there may be to start with there may be discomfort in the ear earache which may be very severe bleeding from the ear 
pressure sens uh, in the ears, sensation of earfulness, hearing loss, there may be dizziness and feeling of un unbalance, tinnitus, ear infections can also occur and recurring pain. Signs that tympanic membrane, it may appear dull, retracted or congested or there may be hemotympanum or tympanic membrane may be perforated with irregular edges and blood at the edges. Tuning fork test when done may show conductive hearing loss. However, in if although rare, the perilymph fistula is developed, then there will be sensorineural hearing loss. But it is very rare. So mainly it will be conductive deafness. So this is a mild case. There is retraction and in this picture if you see uh, there is congestion so this is the original eardrum this is the animated one this is the original so if we see there is dullness and at the periphery there is bleeding and in this picture there is hemotympanum this is the picture of hemotympanum so different grades of autotic barytrauma zero grade zero grade one in which there is only congestion grade two mild bleeding in the middle ear grade three there is bleeding with retraction grade four frank uh, hemotympanum grade five perforation if you notice the perforation the edges as i already mentioned they are irregular and not the smooth one with blood at the margin so whenever there are irregular margins these are usually of traumatic origin perforations and there are chances of this type of perforation to heal so what investigation we need to carry out carried out blood cbc to look if there is any infection there pure tone audiometry show the type of hearing loss and tympanometry will show the pressure changes and the mobility of eardrum and according to that what graph is formed either type C or type B so treatment it is it can be medical or surgical most of the cases they get better with the medical treatment so we have to start with the oral decongestant like pseudoephedrine nasal decongestant like xylometazoline or oxymetazoline nasal drops antihistamines anti-inflammatory drugs analgesics uh, NSAIDs are good antibiotics uh, depending upon the cases uh, so in uh, many cases we may have to start with antibiotics however if there is tympanic membrane perforation when then the clot should be removed and ear should be kept dry surgical treatment so uh, it can be as the eustachian tube if it gets locked so eustachian tube catheterization or polytri polyterization can be attempted but these procedures are not commonly performed so the commonly performed procedure is myringotomy and grommet insertion but this can uh, only be attempted after two weeks of treatment one to two weeks uh, fully treated patients and if they are not getting better then we may have to perform myringotomy and grommet but as I already mentioned you know, that most of the cases they get better with the medical treatment in those patients in which there is tympanic membrane perforation and if that perforation has not healed by six months then three to six months then we may need to do maringoplasty so prevention as everyone knows prevention is better than cure so there are certain ways in which we can prevent uh, barotrauma from happening so it is very important to avoid air traveling in the presence of upper respiratory tract infection or active allergy then patient should or not the person everyone uh, they should swallow repeatedly during descent the best thing is to chew the uh, bubble gum chewing gum it is the best thing especially during descent then do not sleep when the plane prepares to land decongestants before diving and flying nasal decongestant especially especially and like 
if uh, avoidance of air traveling is not possible then 15 minutes before descent uh, the person should in instill the xylo xylometazoline nasal drop inside the nose then descend slowly while diving do breathing exercise avoid wearing earplugs while diving and flying the mechanism i have already mentioned so thank you